Rich Pickett with Personal Wings. On March 30th, 2023, just a few days ago, a Citation CJ3 was flying along. And during their flight from Arkansas down to the southeast, to Florida to be exact, they lost part of their winglet. The winglet they lost is part of the Tamarack upgrade. So let's talk a little bit about that. We don't know all the details, and so I'm not going to surmise what the cause is, but let's talk a little bit about that winglet so you can understand how this winglet works. Tigre and I fly uh, citations with the winglets. We're very happy with them. They work well. We feel very safe. So what appears to have happened is the outboard section of their winglet detached from the airplane. From the photos we can see, what did remain was this portion of the leading edge which is an extension and it's in this point in here, but we don't know, have all the details. So the winglet itself is this portion as well as this vertical portion. So the horizontal portion and here seems to have departed the aircraft as we say. So this winglet also has this active panel. So this active panel moves in response to G loading on the aircraft to reduce load. Now we don't know exactly why this happened and we hope that we'll look and, and we'll learn more. It could have been damaged on the ground, who knows? Um, we're not quite sure at this point, so we'll wait to get more details. Well, let's talk a little bit about winglets and what happens if you lose one of these. This isn't the first airplane to lose winglets. In fact, just recently, an aircraft in flight, a commercial airliner lost a winglet in flight. And we've had these happen since winglets have come out. One of the first ones was on the Voyager, one of Burt Rattan's designs. That airplane flew around the world nonstop with Dick uh, Rattan and Gina, uh, Gina Yeager. In that particular case, as they were taking off, the winglet hit the ground and ended up just flapping. They got rid of it. They flew around the world not having one of those winglets on, and they did it safely. So the whole idea, whenever you have a malfunction, and this is a control surface, all right, this whole thing is a control surface, is the pilots, uh, and this was a very unique emer emergency. Uh, departing a winglet from the Tamarack installations has not happened before this flight, and the pilot did an excellent job, and it ended up diverting to Tampa and maintained control of the airplane. So on one hand, it tells us, hey, this plane is controllable even when you lose one of the winglets with the other one still attached, but it's really important for pilots to maintain control of the aircraft. There's always a question about modifications that happen to aircraft post-certification. Typically call those STCs, right? So what an STC is, is when somebody has developed a modification to an aircraft, it could be an outlet in the plane or it could be modifications to a wing or something else on the airplane, and it's happened post-certification of that particular aircraft. So some people say, hey, you should never modify an airplane. I'm sorry. We've been flying for over 40-some odd years and 400 aircraft. I've flown a lot of planes with STCs. I've got STCs in my airplanes now. 206, we have an STC for wing tip extensions. We have STCs to be able to use the new gamma fuel. We have STCs in, our, in the clips we had. We have STCs in a variety of aircraft. So there's a process where STCs are developed and tested and then are certified by the FAA. Sure, they're not always gonna be 100% infallible, right? but they're part of aviation and there are really good instances where they help. There's been STCs on wings for years, STCs for gap seals. There's been STCs to change the leading edge of the wing so that it has different lift uh, qualities. There's STCs to put speed brakes in wings. Look at the PA-46s, precise flight uh, speed brake system spoilers work excellent. And those are all STCs. And so a lot of developments that have are ended up in, that end up in production airplanes some of those start as STCs, including winglets. Look at the Boeings, the first Boeings, when they had winglets, Boeing didn't even support the idea of doing it when Boundary Layer Research came up with that idea. They made an incredible business and it's helped save the airlines and uh, our environment tremendous amounts of resources because those airplanes with the winglets burn a lot less fuel. And now you'll notice that Airbus 
Boeing and other manufacturers frequently put winglets on. So on these winglets and through here, since this is a controllable surface, one of the first things you do when you have any problems with the Tamarack system is slow down. You want to slow down because all aerodynamic surfaces, which includes wings, winglets, and any control surface that's going to have input by the pilot or inadvertently by some other system, such as your ailerons, your flaps, your elevators, or even these uh, devices on the Tamarack winglets. The faster you go, the more effective they are. And we've had a video about that in terms of talking about on personal wings about control surfaces, pitch anomalies, et cetera. You want to slow down because they're more effective the faster you go. So when you slow down, then you have a better chance of controlling that aircraft. And that pilot did an amazing job. They landed in Tampa. Everybody was okay. And uh, hopefully we'll find out more information about what exactly happened and how this winglet became attached detach. But as I said, it's not the first one. It's happened on Boeings, it's happened on Airbuses, it's happened on aircraft, and uh, airplanes were able to fly without that. It's regrettable, and we never like to see anything come off of an airplane in flight, especially. Uh, but we're going to learn a lot from this accident, and uh, we'll be better pilots and have better aircraft as a result of it. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our personal wing channel down below and uh, we'll see you on our next video.